I'm going to get a gorgeous chair. Okay.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Let your continual mercy, O Lord, cleanse and defend your church, and because it cannot continue in safety without your help, protect and govern it always by your goodness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. O oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourself in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the people, a leader and commander of the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks to, God. to God. Please join in responsive reading of Psalm 145. Your response follows the asterisk. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. Slow to anger and great of kindness. The Lord is loving to everyone. And his compassion is over all his works. The Lord upholds all those who fall. He lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand. The Lord is righteous in all his ways. And loving in all his works. The Lord is near to those who call upon him. To all who call upon him faithfully. He fulfills the desire of those who fear him. He hears their cry and helps them. The Lord preserves all those who love him but he destroys all the wicked. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord. Let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. Our second reading is a reading from Paul's letter to the church in Rome. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belongs the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belongs the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to be to God. The 
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away, so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fishes. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and the two fish. He looked up to heaven, and he blessed and broke the loaves, and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds, and all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full, and those who ate <clears throat> were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. While I was reading in preparation for this sermon on these passages, I came across a story written by N.T. Wright. N.T. Wright is a modern British theologian, a member of the Church of England. And for me, I believe if someone can say it better, then let them say it. So this is the story from N.T. Wright. I wish I could claim ownership because of how good it is. Come and be a character in this story. There's plenty of room, and there's lots to learn. To begin with, cast your mind back to the last time you were really, really sad. After the death of a parent, perhaps, or a close friend. After you didn't get the job you'd set your heart on, after you had to move out of the house that you loved, or the apartment in New York City. <laughs> what you needed and wanted most was to hide away and be quiet, to reflect, perhaps to pray, but above all, to be still and not have people bother you. Then, supposing that quiet place you chose was invaded by hundreds of other people. The little church you thought you'd slip inside was a wedding party. The lonely hillside where surely you could be private was covered in chauffeur hikers. How would you react? Jesus' reaction here is remarkable. He had just lost John, his cousin and his colleague. He'd lost him in a manner which must have warned Jesus of what lay ahead for him. But yet, when he slips away to be quiet and alone, the crowds discover and throng all around him. And his reaction is not anger or frustration, but compassion. He translates his own sorrow over the death of John, and perhaps his own sorrow, into sorrow for them. Before the outward and visible works of power, healing the sick, 
comes the inward, an invisible work of power in which Jesus transforms his own feelings into love for those in need. But maybe you've come into this story of Jesus because you've been touched by that same compassion. So imagine yourself now as one of the disciples, not a leader, just one of the twelve, or perhaps one of their friends or cousins hanging around on the edge. You see how Jesus cares for people, and you'd like to care for them as well. So you think that what might be best for them, and you go to Jesus with a suggestion. Wouldn't it be good to send the crowds away now, so that then they can go and buy food? rather than being here and hungry because we're miles away from anything and we don't want 5,000 hangry people. Jesus is always delighted when people around him come up with ideas which show that they're thinking about others. But the issue is, is that often what he does is he takes those ideas and does something else with them. If you really care for the crowd, he says, why don't you give them something to eat? Our small idea of how to care for people gets bounced back at us with what seems a huge and impossible proposal. You protest. I can't do that. I don't have the time. I don't have the energy. I don't have the ability to do it. But that's the next step. And again, it's typical of how God's calling works. By hanging around Jesus, you get an idea. It's not quite in focus, but your main intention in this case is that people should be fed. So Jesus proposes achieving that aim by a different means. You say it's impossible. But you're prepared to give him what little you have, if it'll do any good. Of course, by you giving up your food, it also means that you're going to go hungry yourself. But by now, you're way too deep into this to say no. Because once the power of Jesus' compassion has begun to catch up to us, you can't stop it. So what precisely Jesus does with what we give him is so mysterious, it's so powerful, that it's hard to describe in words. Imagine you're standing right there while Jesus, surrounded by thousands of people, takes your five loaves and two fish. Hardly enough to feed two people, let alone the crowds around him. And he prays over it. He thanks God for it. He breaks it and he gives it to you and others. And you then give it to one person after another, after another, without knowing what's happening or how. Think through how it's happened. Being close to Jesus has turned into the thought of service. 
Jesus takes that thought, turns it inside out, and gives it back to you as a challenge. In a puzzled response to the challenge, you offer whatever you have, knowing it's not going to be enough. And the same thing happens. He takes it, he blesses it and breaks it, and gives it to you. Now your job is to give it to everyone else. That's how it works. Whenever someone is close enough to Jesus to catch a glimpse of what he's doing and how they could help. We blunder in with our ideas. We offer uncomprehendingly what little we have. Jesus takes our ideas, our loaves and fish, our money, our sense of humor, our time, our energy, our talents, our love, our artistic gifts, or our skill with words, the quickness of our eye or the quickness of our fingers, whatever we have to offer. He holds them before God, his Father, with prayer and blessing, and then breaking them so that they're ready to use. He gives them back to us to give to those who need them. So now these gifts are both ours and not ours. They're both what we had in mind and not what we had in mind. Something greater and different, more powerful and more mysterious. And yet they are still our own. It's part of a genuine Christian service. At what level that we look on in amazement to see what God has done with the bits and pieces that we dug out of our meager resources in order to offer to him. <coughs> of course, within Matthew's story tonight, there's much more going on than simply a remarkable example of Christian vocation. The 12 baskets left over may point to Jesus' intention to, to restore God's people, the 12 tribes of Israel. Jesus feeding people in the wilderness fits so well with Matthew's theme of Jesus as the new Moses. Because remember, God gave the Israelites manna, special bread from heaven, while they were wandering the desert with Moses. And I'm sure that that's what Matthew wanted us to see. And that's probably, that probably explains why as soon as the feeding was done, Jesus sent the crowds away. He didn't want them hanging around and celebrating the miracle and the power that he has. Because Jesus was not intending to march through the land as the head of a huge crowd. He wasn't intending to win military victories against God's enemies. He was going to achieve at last the loneliness he sought at the start of this passage. Unfortunately, that loneliness was hanging desolate on a cross. And so what we need to hear is that you, if you, have a call to follow him, to share Jesus' compassion, to give him what you have so that it can be used in his service, you must also remember that it cost him everything. Amen.
Let us join together as we profess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, Father the Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds with the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. For the Church Universal, give her strength and forbearance as she navigates new and non-traditional ways to be the gospel and to be present to those in our communities. In your mercy. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Help all of us understand that our buildings are not the church, but the foundation which grounds us and from whence we are sent to minister. In your mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of the world, especially countries hardest hit by COVID-19, that may seek out and find the resources to help their countries deal with the pandemic in healthy and life-sustaining ways. In your mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. For the president and the leaders of our country, that they may find the strength to lead with compassion and empathy for all of our citizens, regardless of age, ethnicity, ability, socioeconomic standing, whom they love or where they live. In your mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have contracted the COVID virus, those in isolation or quarantine, for their families and for those that live in a state of anxiety and fear because of it, in your mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people on the front lines, police, firefighters, EMTs, doctors, nurses, and all hospital staff that are putting themselves at risk to minister to the sick in ways that they have never imagined, and for those seeking a cure, in your mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people that are usually forgotten, but that are sustaining us now, grocery store clerks, truckers, farmers and laborers that are being challenged to meet the needs of a society filled with fear, angst, and a tendency towards hoarding. In your mercy. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for parents that are trying to cope with children always at home and for those children that are taking care of their younger siblings. In your mercy. For those that are finding their close quarters smaller than they realized, and for those households where tensions may be running high, in your mercy. We pray for those who find themselves unemployed, and those who have lost their financial security, and those who have had their jobs put on hold, in your mercy. For all who are sick or dying from other reasons, and may be feeling forgotten, in your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. For all that we now name, either silently or aloud. This evening we pray for Paul and all those in assisted living communities. For Paul, 
Jim Ryan, Anna, Colleen, Tone, and all those struggling with cancer and cancer diagnosis. For Kathy and all social workers and chaplains at area hospitals and assisted living facilities. For Martin and all the men and women in the armed forces of this country. For all of those living with chronic pain, especially Sue. For Anna, Beth, Beth, Kathy, Michaela, Patricia, Sharon, Bill, Gina, Ruth, Bill, Linda, Nolan, Mary Ann, Anna, Connor, Christine, Joanne, Pat, Kim. And we give thanks for the healing of Howard and Jean. And we give thanks for a negative test result for Mary Zillalian. We pray for the repose of the soul of Michelle Dittert, who finally succumbed to coronavirus, and to Jim Stewart, James Stewart, husband of Sandy Stewart, on our altar guilt. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all that have died from the spread of this virus, May they find themselves in a place of light and peace, freed from the bonds of this earthly life, and may their families find consolation, knowing their loved ones are wrapped in your embrace. In your mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords with your will. And those good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask, grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection open to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, 
who forever say this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you have made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all, for the remembering, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Has died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look up, lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be, be to God. God. Amen. We will be back here Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and then again next. Oops, sorry. Uh, and then we'll be back here again next Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. Thank <laughs> you.